Thank you.
a little bit of story about Billy. Billy was sitting in a local cafe, smoking a cigarette, and having a beer. Not, not for me these days. I try to stop drinking. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't.
bang a drum, you make the tight skin vibrate at very high speed. It's so fast that you can't usually see it, forcing the air all around it to vibrate as well. As the air moves, it carries energy out from the drum in all directions. Eventually, even the air inside your ears starts vibrating. And that's when you begin to perceive the vibrating drum as a sound. In short, there are two different aspects to sound. There's a physical process that produces sound energy to start with and sends it shooting through the air. And there's a separate psychological process that happens inside our ears and brains, which convert the incoming sound energy into sensations we interpret as noises, speech, and music. We're just going to concentrate on the physical aspects of sound in this article. Sound is like light in some ways. It travels out from a definite source, such as an instrument or a noisy machine, just as light travels out from the sun or a light bulb. But there are some very important differences between light and sound as well. We know light can travel through a vacuum because sunlight has to race through the vacuum of space to reach us on Earth. Sound, however, cannot travel through a vacuum. It always has to have something to travel through, known as a medium, such as air, water, glass, or metal. A humpback whale with its tail above the water. Photo. Sensing with sound. Light doesn't travel well through ocean water. Over half the light falling on the sea surface is absorbed within the first meter of water, 100 millimeters down, and only 1% of the surface light remains. That's largely why mighty creatures of the deep rely on sound for communication and navigation. Whales, famously, talk to one another across entire ocean basins, while dolphins use sound, like bats, for echolocation. Photo by Bill Thompson, courtesy of U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Robert Boyle's classic experiment. The first person to discover that sound needs a medium was a brilliant English scientist known as Robert Boyle, 1627-691. He carried out a classic experiment that you've probably done yourself in school. He set an alarm clock ringing, placed it inside a large glass jar, and while the clock was still ringing, sucked all the air out with the pump. As the air gradually disappeared, the sound died out because there was nothing left in the jar for it to travel through. Robert Boyle.
Thank you.
Thank you.